Detroit. This is Three Detroit Sports Talk, the only show with all of your favorite Detroit sports news and action. I'm Tommy Riles, as always, here with Brendan Riley and Cody Hudson. All right, Detroit. Well, it's a week after draft time, and now it's time for the grade that we give our Lions. Uh, with the first overall pick, we all thought they were, or we all wanted Stephon Gilmore. Ended up getting Riley Reef, obviously, because Stephon Gilmore was gone well before the Lions pick at 23rd overall. Um, Riley Reef, he was an outside tackle from Iowa. Really good pick. I mean, Mayhew said that he was going to be the first, or he was going to draft the best available at the position that they needed, um, which he did. I mean, Riley Reef, outside tackle, he's going to really help this team in the long run. What do you guys think about it? Um, my favorite thing about Riley Reef is his first name Riley. All right, not really. Great pick. Great value pick. We need offensive line. Uh, there are better positions we could have gone, but as far as value, great pick for the future. I completely agree. Uh, he, his, that, this pick by the Lions, I think, was very smart. It was safe in a way. That's what I. That was my first thought on the pick. Was it was safe, but the more I thought about it, it really fits in with how the lot like. We need we need this position. We need to fill this position. I don't know if he's going to start the beginning of the year, but I know by the end of the year he's definitely going to be full time starter. He kind of remi- reminds me of, in a way, uh, Joe Thomas, uh, offensive lineman for think, Cleveland. Cleveland, yeah, Cleveland. Kind of reminds me of him a little bit. Riley Reef has a little bit shorter arms like Joe Thomas does, but he's. Uh, he's physical and he gets. I mean, you could put him at any position on the offensive line. And no, number Outside one being, center. yeah. Uh, and number one being, this is what I like about him the best is, uh, in this pick, the best is that he protects. He plays left tackle, and that's protecting the quarterback's blind side. And that's why this pick. The more than I thought about it, this pick was actually like definitely the best available at that time. I agree with you guys both. Um, well, what main thing I like about it is he's coming from the Big Ten. We all know the Big Ten prides itself on being the power conference. Um, so I mean, you've got tons of I mean, you get tons of defensive players drafted out of the Big Ten every single year. So you know that it's, they send the best available into the draft. And Riley Re- or Riley Reef was the overall twenty third pick. So I mean, that just shows that the kid's got talent right there. I mean, he was a three year starter at Iowa. Um, He's got tremendous upside with him as well. Uh, only thing is right now that they're looking at is the fact that we're paying Bacchus. We're not going to bench a uh, multi-million dollar guy. So as we were talking about last show, um, definitely looking to probably replace Chairless with uh, Riley Reef. I mean, I'm all for that because, I mean, gosh, you're Chairless. He's, he's not horrible, but he's definitely not what's going to get us to the next level. Um, One but, thing that some people have a problem with this with this pick is that DeCastro is available. And a lot of people think DeCastro may have been top 10 talent available. And I, I agree. I think DeCastro was probably a better player. But one very interesting point to look at is that if you expect to be picking in the 20s from now on, which I think we all do, is Unless that we trade. we're not going to find a left tackle in the first round this late. So when he, he falls to you, go ahead and take it. Now, some people don't think he has the ability to play left tackle. But to me, if he does, if if there's a potential for him to be a left tackle and your worst case option is that he can play right tackle, left guard, right guard, gives you a lot of options to work with. I completely agree. I mean, I think a lot of people don't like this pick on a matter of just because it's not the pretty pick. I mean, what do people like most in the draft? They like wide receivers. They like quarterbacks. Well, we're at a point now where we don't want to draft wide receivers. We don't want to draft quarterbacks. And we'll we get to that later. Yeah, we'll get that. Yeah. We'll get to that in a couple minutes. But I mean, we technically we should be at that point where we throw out wide receivers and quarterbacks off the board in the first round because we're set for the next or so many years from now on just because our offense is set. But now that we have an offensive tackle, this is going to help a lot more than drafting a running back in the first round or drafting a wide receiver in the first round. It's just going to work out that way because of the fact that. He's what we needed on the team, and there was no cornerbacks available. And we we talked about it earlier. Stephon Gilmore gone. I think he went like eleventh yeah, overall. Really. Yeah, or Drake Kirkpatrick gone. We knew that both of those two were going to be long shots. We were basically just trying to tell you guys what we wanted as a, a team. And Mayhew actually said he was in talks with teams to trade up, but they were asking way too high. So I mean, 
this Riley Reef pick, I think it's going to be great. I mean, it could end up being as real, or as useful as uh, the Stefan Gilmore pick. I mean, because he's going to yeah. help us just in a different way. It was de- it was definitely a need. Like by any means, I I completely agree with the pick. It Riley Reef, him. Completely lost my train of thought. I, I want to throw one quick uh, interesting thing out there. He was a wrestler in high school for three years. And for those three years, freshman, sophomore, junior year, he won three state championships and had a total record of 121 and one. That may not seem like a big deal, but there's a lot of technique in that. He, he's got to be good with his hands. He's got to be good with his legs. He's got quick, quick movement. Um, I think it's a, it's a minor thing to look at that could be very big. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I lo- I ended up loving this pick just because of the fact that it was a team need, and st- what's the most important thing to this team right now is basically helping Stafford stay up on his feet because I, I as much as he proved to us last year that he is not injury pr- or prone, I mean, there's still going to be people around the area saying that if he gets knocked down, he's still going to be a piece of glass. So, I mean, let's just hope that Riley Reef comes in here and lights it up. I mean, I'm all for it. <laughs> I think he will, definitely. I mean, like I said, he might not be a starter at the beginning of the year, but he's going to work his way into the starting position by the end of the year, easily. Definitely. And like you were saying a little bit earlier about how like we don't need these pretty picks, like these wide receivers, quarterbacks, because we're set there, that's completely 100% agreeable because right now, like where the Detroit Lions are at, we're, we're better, we're developing, we have players at most of our the elite positions besides like defense and cornerbacks and stuff but who's the best available to take and we need to fill that the offensive line we're just stuffing the turkey right now Definitely. that's where we're at yep that's what we're doing so yeah and I think we all agree about Riley Reed. yeah definitely a great pick I think he's gonna help out the team now with the second round pick Heard a lot of this on draft night because not only did they completely screw this one up, but they drafted a guy who probably would have been there still in the third round. I don't know if you guys think so, but you've got a guy in Ryan Broyles who I, I he tore an ACL in his or in his game against Texas. That is one of the hardest injuries to come back from. I mean, I know Terrell Suggs just tore his this past week, and he's saying that he's going to be all in it for midway through the season. Sit down, son. You're not sitting or coming back midway through the season. He is going to be out the entire season. Ryan Broyles is coming back from this because he suffered it against Texas. If he can come back healthy, I mean, this is talent wise, it's a great pick. But for what this team needed in this draft, it did not make sense to take this pick in the second round. I'm not happy with this pick, but as time goes on more and more, I be- begin to be okay with it. I-, I definitely don't like it. It's probably, to me, the pick in the entire draft I'm the most upset about. The kid is fast, though. You watch some highlight videos on him. If he comes back with that same speed, it's going to be it's gonna be another weapon. I don't think it's needed. Well, I'll be honest with you. I mean, when we were watching the draft, or well, I was watching the draft at my house. Brendan was watching it at his house. And he texted me right when this pick went on, or went on the air. And when he, actually, I take that back. He was at work because he was telling me not to, or he was was telling me not to text him about the draft because he had it recording at home. He went into the break room, found out this was the pick, and automatically (laughs) decided he wasn't watching the draft when he got home (laughs) because of the fact that we were so stupid with this pick. I mean, like I said, if if we're trying to replace Burleson, that's great. But, I mean, there's other ways to replace Burleson, and you did not. You don't draft a replacement player in the second round of the NFL draft unless this guy is going to come in and replace a guy who's already hurt or something like Especially that. Especially as a third receiver. Exactly. Or maybe even he has the, the potential to be a second mm-hmm. receiver. Okay, I'm going to come in on the flip side. A little bit. You guys are being really harsh on this pick. I, okay, at first I really didn't like this pick at all. Because, I mean, we have Calvin, we got Titus, and we got Nate. Three great receivers. All could be, well, I mean, Calvin obviously is the number one. Nate, Nate Burleson, he was, he was a number one in his, at back Seattle in his or prime. something. Been a while. Back in his prime. But, and Titus, I don't know, he could probably develop into a number one, but he's too short. So I mean, he's a number two. Yeah, he's normally, he's a slot guy, I think. But, 
that's all we have at wide receiver. Like, name another guy. I mean, well, I could, I could name another guy, but, like, regular fans of the team, could they name another guy under those three Well, I mean, you got to remember, though. Besides tight ends. Sta- yeah, Stafford's main two guys, or, well, main three guys this past year, Titus Young, Calvin Johnson, Brandon Pettigrew. And he had yeah. a way to make that work. Deep well, yeah. to Calvin, short routes to uh, Pettigrew and Young. And when they needed power, they'd just go to Pettigrew and he'd plow up the middle with, uh, or after he catches it. So, I mean, a lot of what the, the main thing that I like about this pick after looking at it for a couple weeks is the fact that Ryan Broyles is fast. If, uh, I went back and looked at some of the stats. The Lions were top 10 last year in line or yards after care or yards after catch. So, I mean, once they touch the ball, if they can break a tackle, if Ryan Broyles can break a tackle, mm-hmm. he's gone. No one's going to catch this guy. He's just like Titus Young. The same way as Megatron, if he jumps over somebody and gets away from him, there's no one going to catch Megatron. I mean, we, right. we're we on pay, or pace to basically have the fastest wide receiver core in football, like, legitly. I mean, it legitimately. But, uh, Ooh, legitly, that's a yes, good word. Yes, legitly. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, there's just... Th- this team's going to be gifted. If if everything pans out the way it should, Definitely. then I think it really I, will. I do like Ryan Royals. I like his game. I think what upsets me the most isn't as much as who we took as who was available. You got Peter Kahn sitting pretty right there for you, and maybe we don't need another offensive lineman. But you take Peter Kahn's, and all of a sudden you go from the offensive line being a big question to you have two guys to step in in the next few years and could very potentially be some very good offensive line. Starting for the next 10, 10, 12 years. I'm going to throw this one out there. I don't know. I I know I texted Brendan about this, um, but... The thing that I, it was one of the higher ups in the Lions organization. He sent out a YouTube video before the second day of the draft even started. And I was really mad about this because he sends out a video saying there is no chance that we will trade up for Janoris Jenkins. I know the guy had problems. I know we were saying rip the paper on him last week and everything. But But in the second round. In the second round, when he didn't go until like, I think like the 13th or 14th pick. Yeah. I mean, when you need a cornerback, that's when you kind of have to start thinking. We even said this last week. Start if if he's available in the second round, you go, you go yeah, you get him, and him. you go pick him up because that's what we needed help with cornerback. I mean, Ryan Broyles is great, but I don't think Ryan Broyles is going to go on the other side of the ball and take away passes from Drew Brees or anything because Ryan Broyles is a receiver. He's not a cornerback, and the Lions' main focus in this draft should have been a cornerback. I mean. We'll get to it in a couple minutes because, I mean, they did end up solidifying the defense a little bit more at the later parts of the draft, but I feel like they definitely could have used the second-round pick as an advantage, and I think we definitely could have moved up and tried to get Janoris Jenkins. But, I mean, I think the Lions played their card a little bit too early in this draft. All right, so I think we're, for the most part, on the same page as well with Ryan Broyles. Uh, he, he has he's a got chance. Some upside. Yeah, he's got an upside, but upside. I mean, it's just a question of is he going to come back healthy and as fast as he was before? If it well, let's ACL. put it this way: Where do you guys think Ryan Broyles would have gone if he didn't tear his ACL? Do you think he was a first round receiver if he didn't tear his ACL? Absolutely, I think he was. Yes. I do too. I think so. I mean, he if was. he can come back and be as significant to this offense as he was in Oklahoma before his knee injury, I am all in on this pick and. I'll even I'll I'll announce it on this show that we or we were wrong and Ryan Broyles is the best thing since sliced bread. But I mean he's got to prove it because, like I said, this injury that he suffered is a very very hard thing to come back from. But let's go ahead and move on uh, with the third round overall pick number eighty five. Uh, we ended up taking Dwight Bentley. I, I don't know about you guys. I love the pick. Yeah, I mean Dwight, I love the pick. Yeah. I'm gonna start with this pick. The big thing I like about this, and it's it's not just him, but it's also uh, it was Greenwood. We picked up in the sixth round. Or it was the fifth round. The, the uh, fifth round. It was the fifth round. Second, we Mayhew, had two picks in the fifth round. Mayhew was a uh, cornerback in, in, in his time in the game, and to me, it says something that he's looking at guys from Louisiana Lafayette, and Albie in college. I think Dwight Bentley's got some very high upsides. Very athletic guy. He played in a small conference. Didn't have the best talent. From what I understand, he he uh, excelled in the senior bowl, which is good. Got mm-hmm. to play up against some good talent. 4-4 speed to go with some great athleticism and ball skills. Probably not an immediate starter, but, you know, if they can work him in within some point in the year, get him some snaps. He's, he's got some very good upside as well. 
I, I think so. completely agree. I mean, the main thing is here, our main two choices for this year's draft if we were going to get a cornerback were obviously Stephon Gilmore, Drake Kirkpatrick. I mean, Morris Claiborne was in the draft, but you knew he wasn't getting anywhere past the first 10 picks. Um, then we found out that Stefan Gilmore wasn't going to make it past the first 11. So, I mean, that kind of threw a twist in everything. And I, I think honestly that second or that second round pick was kind of just, I don't know. I don't know if it was a scared pick or what. Cause I mean, they said they were going to take the best available with that second round pick. And I think they might've just been at that point where they, they figured there was going to be one of the cornerbacks available in the first round. Cause every mock draft around had Stefan Gilmore and one of either Stefan Gilmore or Drake Kirkpatrick there in the first round. And when both of them were gone, I think that kind of scared them. And they kind of just made a jump to it pick with Ryan Broyles in the second round, but they definitely saved themselves with this third round pick with Dwight Bentley, just because I think this guy is going to have a tremendous upside. I mean, in the bowl game that I was watching, this guy was quick as could be. He had hands like none other that I've seen before. I mean, the guy can jump out of the stadium. Um, so I I like the guy. I mean, he's he's from a smaller college, so he didn't have the best receivers going at him. But a lot of times, most if you like watch the NFL as much as we do, you'll see that a lot of the cornerbacks are actually from smaller colleges, and they just develop once they get to the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, the only thing I'm scared of. Is him coming into a Gunther Cunningham offense or uh, defense? I don't know if that's going to help him or if it's going to hurt him. Um, so I mean, because Gunther Cunningham is a really aggressive co- uh, uh, defensive coordinator, so he likes yeah. to go after the ball. I don't know how great he's going to be on the blitz, but if you put him one on one with someone, I'll take he's, this guy over anybody. I mean, Bentley is physical. He like he. I I watched some of his uh, footage, some of his playing time at. Uh, Lafayette, and he, he, he gets physical. He comes up, he makes a tackle. He, he's not afraid to hit people, which is one thing that, that I really, really thrive on and love in a cornerback is that, is being physical and not being afraid to hit. That's why, like, Al Harris from Green Bay, like, I always loved him because he is physical. He yep. gets in there well, and he makes a hit. He pops the ball out, pops the ball loose. In today's NFL, you have to be a physical cornerback because – now, nowadays, it's pretty much when the receiver catches the ball, he's looking to lay you out just like you're looking to lay him yep. out. Because I don't know how many times I've watched in the past couple of years, you see a receiver come up the middle, he'll plow into the cornerback, the cornerback's going down, knocked out, and the receiver's running all the way to the end zone. I mean, it just happens now. So, I mean, overall, I'm happy with this pick. I mean, he's going to end up being a starter. Brendan, you have one more let, thing? Let me give you an interesting uh, comparison on this guy. Okay. Cortland Finnegan. Seventh round draft pick from Samford University. Right. Not Stanford. Samford. Samford. Yep. Another small guy. They're the same height, 5'10 each. Uh, Cortland Finnegan's 192. Dwight Bentley, Dwight Bentley is uh, 182. Very similar players. Uh, physical guys. Very athletic. Came in with, you know, maybe not the highest expectations. But uh, another guy Jim Schwartz worked with. Uh, I, I think... I, I really think Jim Schwartz uh, sees a little bit of Cortland Finnegan and Dwight Bentley because I sure do. Yeah, very I mean, solid player, guy comparison. you don't expect from a, a, a lower lower level school. A lot of lot of upside for this guy. Yeah, I think we all can agree pretty I much agree. that they hit this one right on the head. I mean, they needed a cornerback and they definitely got it. Um, do you think he's going to start at the beginning of the year? I don't think he will start. I don't, I don't think either. he will yeah, either. I, but he'll get playing time definitely. Yeah. Uh, he'll he'll he's rotate gonna have, in and out with probably Alfonso Smith. He's going to have to earn his way onto the uh, basically starting lineup, but do I think he's going to start halfway through the season? Yes. I, wouldn't decide. I think I'll decide Chris, Chris I Houston. I think as start. early as probably week five or week six, you could see him probably as late as the Thanksgiving game. You'll see him start. I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see him start at all, but I think he's got potential to start. We'll have to see how he, uh, how he, how he looks in his early games. Definitely. And in a way, this is why... I'm not so upset about the Ryan Broyles pick because we ended up getting Dwight Bentley in the third round, which was a great pick yep. because I love this pick. This is actually the pick that I'm most fond of in the draft. Well, besides Riley Reef, out of the rest of our out of our eight picks, yep. Riley Reef and Dwight Bentley, those two picks were my number one favorites. I agree. Dwight Bentley was a, a nice a nice pick in the third round. Yeah. All right. Um, let's move on. Uh. For the fourth and fifth round, we'll kind of mix those two together. Um, in the fifth round, we actually had two picks. Uh, actually, the funny part about all three of these picks, for the fourth and the two fifth round pick, our picks, we traded for every single one of these picks. 
The fourth round pick we traded with the 49ers to get Ronald Lewis, another guy from Oklahoma, D end, outside linebacker. Um, I mean, I didn't see too much on this kid, but I feel like he's going to help. I mean, anytime you can get an, a linebacker or a defensive end out of Oklahoma, I mean, nine times out of ten, they're going to end up building into a great player. Um, he actually, they were actually saying that he could have come out last year. Uh, if he would have come out last year, I feel like that he probably would have gone higher in the draft. He kind of hurt his stock this year. Um, I, he got hurt halfway through the season. Uh, it was only for like a week or two, but he, I mean, that could have hurt because he missed two games. Um, with the fifth round pick, who we got from the Vikings, we also got another outside linebacker, Tahir Whitehead out of Temple. Um, same thing. Always can use an, our linebacker to just keep building on this squad. And then the last fifth-round pick that we had was the 148th overall from the Raiders. We took a local kid from Albion College, Chris Greenwood, cornerback. Again, we needed. We can all say that our main focus in this draft was cornerbacks and yes. defense because we pretty much, after we took the, uh, the, th- uh, the two offensive players in the first two rounds, it was all defense, and you could tell they were going at it hard because they... They kind of solidified themselves for the next few years with cornerbacks just because they want to have a healthy competition for these spots. Um, so those are the three picks that we took. What do you guys think? Uh, the Lewis pick, I like. Uh, defensive end, linebacker. Uh, he, he can move around, play defensive end a little bit. I mean, we have our three starting linebackers. The, the same three that we've had coming back in. Like, we have the same three that we had last year. Coming back this year, and it's like the first year in, in long I don't know, it's been a while. 15 yeah. years, 10 years well, that we had the same linebacking core. Well, my problem with Ron L. Lewis, it, and he's an okay pick, and probably one of my least favorite picks outside of Broyles, honestly. He, they're not looking at him at linebacker. No. He's, no, he's a defensive yeah. end. Um, if they really see a potential starter out of him, I'm okay with it. I don't know that I see that. I, I don't see the need at defensive end that some people do. I, I couldn't tell you what other uh, picks were available here. I'm not a big fan of defensive end at this time. They say that his size and speed makes you think of uh, Willie Young. And I'm a big fan of Willie Young, but I don't understand why would we draft a guy like Willie Young when we have Willie Young, yeah, we have Lawrence Jackson. We have, we have some good depth at defensive end. Well, well we have a lot of them. We're just adding more depth on to our... Onto our depth. defensive line, yeah, One which is great something thing that, that we, we have going for this team, though, is you do still have Stephen Tulloch, who is basically going to be. I mean, he's he is the leader on that defense now. I don't. I mean, Sue. We thought Sue was going to be the leader, and he kind of had the personal issues to where he just went off on his head case. And then when we brought Tulloch in, I personally think that in the secondary, he's basically the leader. Once you get past the defensive line, I mean, Vandenbosch takes care of the defensive line. But Tulloch is going to be able to teach these young linebackers how to play. And, I mean, I think they basically tried to save themselves here. Because, I mean, they're not, there's no way we're going to be able to keep all three of those linebackers forever. So, I mean, with drafting these linebackers, you're basically solidifying yourself for the future as well. And, I mean, if they're going to – if you if you tell me they're going to have, like, a quarter of their uh, talent as uh, Tulloch going in – to the season, once Tullock gets him under his wing and actually starts working with him and stuff, I feel like, and uh, um, Gunther Cunningham, I feel like those two are definitely going to be able to help these new or young linebackers just be aggressive. And I, I think personally that eventually we might have one of the best defenses in football once we start solidifying this stuff. Because, I mean, we might have gotten late-round picks, but all of these guys can definitely play. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I, I like a lot of our picks after the late or in the later rounds. Um, I feel like we moved around a lot, which really helped us. So see, I disagree with you on the, uh, the linebacker. I think the linebackers are here to stay. I think Levy's going to be, he's from what I, I see, I don't think he's going to be any kind of big money guy. I think you're going to be able to keep him for a fairly cheap price. I think talk, talk's a little more expensive, but they got him under what now? Five, five year years, deal. Yeah, yeah we keep it. Durant's the only one I'm a little concerned That's with. And I, exactly I know he was really pushing for uh, Tullet to come back, and to me that says something. He he likes the consistency there. It yes. is, but you gotta get you do have to remember mm-hmm. with the Lions, I mean, it's pretty much coming down to D Day here eventually. One of these days we're gonna have to cut either Stafford or Sue. I mean, we gave uh, we gave Megatron the huge contract, so that And you know solid- it's not gonna be Stafford. Right. That solidifies Megatron to be here. So now it comes down to Stafford and Sue. As Brendan just said, it's not going to be Stafford. You're not going to get rid of your quarterback. Oh. 
Are you guys comfortable with getting rid of Sue and well, not having a replacement? Once you right lose, now? well, I don't. I don't necessarily think you don't have a replacement. I, I like Sammy Lee Hill a lot. It's it's a weak replacement. You need to go out and get somebody. But you know, you can sign a, a D, you can sign a Corey Williams like player. In my opinion, get a guy like Corey Williams. Yeah, decent decent guy. Nothing special. Well, let's have it. Or let's put it this way: If Sue comes back this year, I mean, he had a down season last year. Do we not? Agree. You're right. I agree. If he comes back mm-hmm. and has his rookie season, but better than his rookie season, keeps his head on straight, does that change at all? Do we try to keep him? I like to trade him immediately. I think he's got a lot of trade value if he plays like his he, first season. We can't trade him though, because we don't have the. Uh, we only have him under his rookie deal or deal right now. Once this year is over, his contract is done. We only signed him to a two-year rookie deal or three-year rookie deal. See, I'm not so sure about that, but um. You anyways, let's let's move on to to outside linebacker. Uh, Tyre Whitehead, don't like this pick. I hate this pick. This, yes. I despise this pick. I think this in every way possible. I the one reason I'm okay. It adds you a little bit of depth at linebacker, but to be perfectly honest, I'm not so sure this guy makes a team this year. I don't even. I think maybe practice squad. I do. I do too. I mean, he's athletic, but I see that's all I see out of him. I agree. I mean, I. I like the first linebacker pick, but I think they kind of went nuts with this one. I mean, he's he's not great. He's not horrible, but I, I don't know. I, I mean, he's gonna be. He's, this is this is a fifth round pick, yes, and I mean that's exactly what you he can't is. you can't criticize it that much. But still, you could. There's still some good value left in the fifth round. I mean, you got to remember, like Tom Brady was a sixth round pick. Look what he's doing. I mean, these picks all matter, but he. Just I I don't like this pick at all. I think I don't think he's gonna make the team. Maybe practice squad, and if he does make the team, he might play a little bit on special teams on kickoff and punt. But I don't. I really hate this pick. Just real quickly to go back on Sue, he actually signed a five year, sixty eight million dollar yeah. contract. Just found so so well. you still have him under contract a few years. It's, it's already a big contract. You free up that money. I mean, you got some money to work with, but yeah, definitely. I mean, maybe he'll want to compromise and stay with Detroit because he likes the organization. Yeah. Uh, Calvin did. It's possible. Calvin yeah. did. Well, so. put it this way. I mean, when he first signed, he did actually sign. His rookie deal was supposed to be two years. He did sign. He signed the extension through, or two months after the draft. I'm reading that on ESPN right now. So that's where the two-year came from. So before he even played a snap in Detroit, he already wanted to, or the extension to five years. So, I mean... I, I don't know. I feel like pretty soon the uh, Lions are going to become like another Detroit franchise in this area, the Red Wings. And a lot of people are going to start wanting to just play here, for, or just to play here. All right, um, now, we're going to take a, a fairly quick wrap up of our last few picks. Uh, Chris Greenwood, Albion College. I like the pick. There, there's some potential there. Now there's a small corner. When you're looking five, six, seven, you're not looking for guys who are going to start immediately. You're basically looking at guys who can progress, and hopefully you'll hopefully find a goal. Mar- yeah, hopefully you'll find a Marcus Colston and be able to find a guy who's going to come in and light up the world. But, I mean, you're not looking for that. Um, sixth round, you've got Jonte Green, another cornerback. Again, the Lions basically in the last couple picks were basically just trying to make sure could, you had a healthy competition. He could end up he, being... Uh, safety. He could play safety. Exactly. He can play he safety. Switch over. Um, and then the last pick overall for the Lions was the 223rd from Philadelphia. Um, he at, they, We drafted Travis Lewis, outside linebacker from Oklahoma. I don't know what Oklahoma had with us. I don't know if we they paid us or what, but we took a lot of Sooners this year. Um, I mean, again, seventh round pick. I mean, you're not expecting this guy to come in and light up the world. He's basically just coming to be on the practice squad and hopefully he turns into something. Four seventh rounder. I thought he was uh, he was good value. Oh, definitely. I mean, definitely. if you anytime you can get a guy from Oklahoma who started in the seventh round. That's a gold mine. I would grade that pick as an A, that seventh round pick. Yeah, it's a, a good seventh round pick. That was, yes, very <laughs> seventh round pick. All right, um, all together, we all have our grades for the draft. Um, me personally, I give the or I if we only had two rounds in this draft, it was a D. But they saved themselves in the last two, or the last two days. I mean, the last two days, I brought their grade up to probably about a B minus. I mean, it wasn't the greatest draft overall. However, it wasn't a horrible draft. I mean, Riley Reeves going to come in and definitely help us. If Ryan, put it this way, if Ryan Broyles comes in and ends up being what he can be, what we all know he can be, then my draft could go as high as an A. But the fact, because we did get a lot of help in the defensive secondary with our later round picks, but I just don't know if that second round pick is actually going to cost us yet with Ryan Broyles if we gambled too much on that. 
Um, so as of right now, I do have it on a B minus, but it could change. I, uh, years. My I okay. After the draft was all said and done, my first thoughts were a little bit iffy on the draft and on what they did here and everything. But the more I s- sat and thought about it, well I, well, I mean, I don't sit and think like, oh, the draft. I have to contemplate that all day. But anyways, the more I thought about it for the next over the next couple of days after it was over, I started to really like quite a few of these picks in here. And originally, I would have said maybe a C, C plus. Now I'm going to go just a straight B. I like some of the picks iffy to me. Other picks I thought were great. Brendan, before you get on yours real quick, I was actually just reading on uh, Bleacher Report. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think about this. First uh, article that it says on our last, this is our seventh round pick, Travis Lewis. Sleep on Travis Lewis at your own risk. I'm talking to you, DeAndre Levy. Lewis is an incredible steal in the seventh round, so much so that I wouldn't be surprised to see him push the starters by the end of the season. If this guy comes out and ends up being a starter at the end of the season, automatically I give the Lions an A-plus for this draft. <laughs> you, If you steal a guy in the seventh round who ends up becoming a starter, I mean, I forgot about this, but Bobby Car- or Carpenter recently signed with New England. So, I mean, right. there's there's a lot of upside to all these young linebackers coming in to be a backup. And if they end up getting on the field, I mean... if you know how it is. If you have one good week in the NFL, all of a sudden you're looking at like a gold mine, and you can just carry off that with the momentum. So I mean, Bobby Carpenter is like, exactly who I think of when I look at this pick. I yep. I've heard this guy's got his highest second, third round talent. I don't expect to see him push the starting lineup this year. No, he no, should no. be a good depth guy, and he I, has like potential. I said, if this guy pushes the starting lineup in the or this year. Oh, hands down, the straps and A. Yeah, I mean, I mean if, if, if he if he can even yes. get in there and get some playing time and, and all the credit get, goes get to, some reps, yep. get some snaps and games, and the credit goes all to the Lions organization if this guy ends up being a starter, though, just because this is a seventh round pick. All right, Brendan. All right, no not more, please. <laughs> for my draft grade, you know, early on, immediately after, like, like all of us, we seem to uh, think about it more and feel it was better than we originally thought. I was looking at a B minus, but the more I look at it, I, I say Riley Reef. Great pick. A. Broyles, I can live with it. I don't agree with it. I can live with it. I like it's one, of, it's one of those picks, legitly, that you don't know what you're going to get out of this guy. Well, I yeah. liked I liked that pick more after I seen the Dwight Bentley pick. I like the Dwight Bentley pick a lot. Because once you see that, you're like, oh, we got now we have somebody that is, could start at corner. That's why we were mad, because we wanted the corner in the second round. Trade up, get Janoris Jenkins, something like that. But I... After seeing the Dwight Bentley pick, Ryan Royals doesn't piss me off as much. And as, as we get later into the draft, it's a lot of hit and miss guys. Some guys could could get, could be potential starters in the future. Some could be out of the NFL by the end of the year. I'm well, gonna have to say I'm looking at a B with potential to be. If Ryan Broyles doesn't do anything, his injury affects him. I probably fall to a C plus. And if he comes back as is a stud, is showing all his speed, I, I could I could be looking as high as an A. A, a, a plus, honestly. Well, I'm about yeah. to change both of your guys' mind on this right now. Day after the draft, we signed a winner. The champion of the Mountain West. I'm talking about Boise State quarterback Kellen Moore. Hands down, best pick of the draft. Even though he wasn't in the draft. Just kidding. But seriously, I mean, is this a good pick? I mean, I think of, I think of the fact that we have Sean Hill... But as a third string starter or uh, quarterback, we we got rid of uh, Stanton. Drew, Stanton's, or yeah, gone. Drew Stanton's gone. Bringing in Colin Moore, I mean, he's obviously he's not going to push for the starting position. We don't want him to push for the starting <laughs> position. If he's pushing for the starting position, we're going to be in the tank. So, uh, but I think Kellen Moore is going to help the Lions a lot more than people think, just because of the fact. He is a solid, he's just a leader. I mean, even the, even though he's coming straight in from college, I feel like this guy could end up being like a vocal leader on this team with Stafford. And if he learns under Stafford, I wouldn't be surprised eventually if you do see Kellen Moore starting on an NFL team. I, I don't know. I think this pick gives you a lot of value right now. Well, this, this signing gives you a lot of value right now. But, I mean, you're not going to get a lot of value out of a, a third-string quarterback. But you got to take it for what it's worth. It's a great signing, in my opinion. He's... Not the best football player. That that's just the honest truth. He's, small. he's a very smart yeah. guy. Yeah, he's he's, he's a smart. winner. You're, you're, you, I wouldn't be surprised either. You give this guy. You know what I expect to see is in in the near future. Sean Hill's getting old. Kellen Moore probably takes the number two position. And Eventually, he, he like you said, he's a leader. He's a good guy to have late on your roster. Yeah. Um. So overall, we're 
pretty hit or miss on this draft. I mean, it all depends on how these guys pan out, but that's pretty much every team. Um, we do want to thank you guys again for listening to 3 Detroit Sports Talk. Um, uh, touch on Ryan Grant real quick. Oh, yes. Yeah, we did hear today that we have offered Ryan Grant a contract. I don't know. I don't know about it. I mean, it's going to... Obviously, we need help at the position. However, is this going to hurt having a 25, 30 carry guy a game just because you're taking the ball out of Stafford's hands a little bit? Yeah, I I mean, we need depth at running back. I mean, all the injury problems that we've had, Javi Best coming back off of a season-ending injury. Mikella Shore is coming back off of a season-ending injury. I mean, Kevin Smith is there, but, you know, he had his season-ending injury and he came back. He had his comeback year last year in a way. Come back here. Injured again. But Ryan Grant to me is just hurt again. whatever. Not not needed, not gonna hurt. It's I mean I guess yeah, I, I think guess it's a signs, solid pickup. I mean he signs is a good pickup, nothing special. Yeah. yeah. Well, um one last thing. Uh this is for the next show actually, so all of you guys who are listening, leave us comments on the show. We will be putting a post on our Facebook page, Three Troy Sports Talk. Um go like the page if you haven't yet. Uh, leave comments on the page, though. We are going to be talking about the Tigers. Is it time to panic yet, or is it not? Uh, these first couple weeks, we're just all involved with the Lions just because it was draft time. But our Tigers are struggling, fellas, and I think it's time we need to, we need to do something because, obviously, Brandon Inge wasn't the main reason why the team wasn't hitting. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Maybe we'll talk about it. For Brendan Riley and Cody Hudson, I am Tommy Riles, and this was 3 Detroit Sports Talk. You guys have yourself a great day.